The following is a recount of the life of Project Ito. I've constructed it based on accounts from Hideo Kojima, Ito's defunct blog that has been partially restored, and various other sources. It is presented with complete respect to Ito and his family, and I hope that after hearing his story, you'll know exactly why the genocidal organ, Harmony and Empire of Corpses films are important. In 1998, acclaimed game director Hideo Kojima met his biggest fan at Tokyo Game Show. Kojima was there promoting the upcoming release of Metal Gear Solid for the PlayStation 1 when a 23-year-old Satoshi Ito came up to him and started a conversation. Kojima was amazed by his enthusiasm for his games, going on to claim that he was one of the very few people who truly understood the themes involved in titles such as Police Knots, Metal Gear Solid, and Metal Gear Solid 2 Sons of Liberty. The two quickly became close friends, and Satoshi Ito continued his life as a web designer, occasionally writing articles for his website Spook Tales, where he also started to write fanfiction based on the Metal Gear Solid and Sinatra universes, both of Kojima's making. But cut the nonsense about shitty fanfiction, because this stuff was good, gathering praise from even hardcore fans at the time. He later told Kojima that he got into writing after playing Snatcher, a game about a breed of artificial life forms killing their victims and taking their place within society. At the time, Game Fan Magazine quoted it as the most involving video game storyline ever, and it inspired video game creators and writers alike one of which being a young Satoshi Ito. However, tragedy struck when Ito was diagnosed with cancer in 2001 at the young age of 26. At the time, he describes on his website how he watched the news following the World Trade Center attack in hospital, how he had lost the control of his right knee, and how he spent a lot of time watching David Cronenberg movies. But what's really, really interesting is later on in the post where he starts to talk about technology and medicine. The following is of my own translation. I've been asthmatic since ancient times. My inhaler was a must-have item. I've been injected with anti-cancer drugs now, and we are fighting with the possibility of cancer in the body. Before the beginning of the century, without these drugs, I would be dead. To maintain my own presence, I need a medicine that was created by science and technology. A body that is maintained by science and technology. Without these things, I break down. This means, in short... Even I am a cyborg. It's tremendous writing and it's ideas like these that are brought into his stories and there's even more of it later on where he talks a bit more about Metal Gear Solid. Speaking of which, as soon as Kojima heard about Ito's diagnosis, he rushed to hospital to meet him. And whilst he was there, he showed Satoshi the first ever footage of Metal Gear Solid 2, which was absolutely against Konami company policy. After speaking with Kojima about the next entry in the franchise, Ito said, I won't die until you finish this game. Thankfully his condition improved and he got the chance to fulfil his promise, and he ended up writing loads about Metal Gear Solid 2, talking about the differences between reality and virtual reality, getting ridiculously philosophically deep, although the Metal Gear Solid community really really liked his ideas, and Kojima himself agreed. But it was about time for Satoshi to step up to the plate himself. Based on a fanfiction of Snatcher, he entered his brand new novel into a contest using the pen name Project Ito. It didn't win, but he managed to impress publishers and it was released in 2007 under the name Genocidal Organ and nominated for a Japanese Science Fiction Award. For those keeping track, that is the same genocidal organ that was under production at Manglobe until it got delayed due to the studio's closure. But back to 2007, and Kojima was so impressed with genocidal organ that he asked Project Ito to write a novelization of Metal Gear Solid 4. This was to be the first, and unfortunately the only time, the two were to work together. This novelization is regarded amongst fans to be one of the best and immensely praised by Kojima. It was these two releases that sparked his writing career into life even while suffering from cancer. He was constantly having to go back to hospital for 
all these years, yet he went on to write a brand new book released in 2008 under the name of Harmony. This is the second book to be adapted into an anime film directed by Michael Arias, the director of Tekon King Great. Now, as someone who managed to find the only copy of Harmony in the city, I can tell you now that it's fantastic. Set in a world following nuclear fallouts, the world suffers huge outbreaks of cancer and to accommodate this, transforms into a medical utopia. Cancer is cured along with every other disease in the world and children are valued as a precious resource. However, Humanity doesn't know where to stop and tries to cure mental health as well. All media involving any form of violence or aggression is banned as the World Health Organizations try to enforce kindness. Project Itar wrote a story about wanting to get out of a hospital that you can't escape. Sound familiar? I won't say any more because the hope is that you'll watch it someday and I'm sure you'd prefer a spoiler free experience. And I'm not the only one saying it was great as it went on to win the Japanese Science Fiction Award, the Seiyun Award and was even nominated for the Philip K. Dick Awards. Project Ito was an established award winning science fiction writer and the accolades just kept coming. He even started on his new story, Empire of Corpses, which would go on to be adapted at Wit Studio with the director of HAL at the helm. However, his condition took a turn for the worse once again in 2009, and he was starting to lose his battle to cancer. Kojima rushed to hospital once again, and this time told him all about his next game, Metal Gear Solid Peace Walker. Remember what I said about showing footage outside the studio being against Konami company policy? Kojima went a step further and told Ito everything about the game before it had even been announced. He even asked Ito to write a new novelization combining Metal Gear Solid 3 and Peace Walker. Ito said to Kojima once more, I won't give up until you're done. Tragically, Project Ito never could keep his promise as he passed away the next month at the age of 34 after a fight with cancer that lasted 8 years. Hideo Kojima dedicated Metal Gear Solid Peace Walker to him and his final book, Empire of Corpses, was completed by his friend Tor Enjo. Kojima later revealed that after Metal Gear Solid 5, he planned on passing the entire franchise to Project Ito, believing him to be one of the very few people in the world who completely understood his characters and themes. And now, in 2015, it was revealed that the Noitamina programming block would be producing adaptations of all three of his novels. Every single one of them was passed over to some of the best anime directors in the business, with them being released in tandem, starting with Empire of Corpses. As a conclusion, this is an extract from one of his last posts on the website, just three months before his death. Once again, this is my own translation. People die, but death is not a defeat. Hemingway once said that. Whether winning or losing is what it was to Hemingway, I have little information on the matter, but I can understand what the words mean. Humans dwell in others as a story. People can continue to live on within someone else as narrative. Then, by being a part of the variety of spoken words, they become part of the fiction that can shape humanity. Death was not a defeat for Satoshi Ito, and with the anime films his stories will be immortalised once more for a brand new audience. And when you get to your local cinema with ticket in hand, remember this story. Remember the story of the man who built his own legacy. Remember the man who was the world's biggest Metal Gear fan. And remember the man who didn't give up.